Hey, this is Owen Malley with GearWire.com, and this is going to be uh, just a quick video tutorial on how to create submix buses in Propellerhead Record. Uh, it's uh, always kind of struck me as a little funny that Propellerhead marketed Record as the DAW for musicians, and then meanwhile uh, supplying it with this incredibly sort of complex but also powerful uh, mixing interface based on an SSL 9000K series console. It is really cool to have this, you know, big sort of visual representation of of your mixing interface and, you know, there are parts of it that are very intuitive. But other things like creating buses, creating submix buses, are not necessarily the most intuitive operation. But once you do, it gives you quite a bit of routing flexibility, uh, which is kind of nice. So let's just see how it's done in this sort of visual mixing environment. I've got a track loaded up that's uh, Neil Young's Harvest Moon, as recorded by me and my sisters. Uh, and let's just listen to the track real quick. Actually, let's take a look at our rack and just see what else we've got going on. You can see as we look at the well, the mixing channels, we've got uh, we've got an acoustic bass, stand-up bass. We've got a harp uh, in left and right channels. Uh, we've got three lead vocals, three backing vocals, two acoustic guitar tracks, and some uh, percussive elements. Now let's uh, we're going to focus on the harp here, but let's just listen back and hear what's going on. Come a little bit close. So now you can see that if I want to adjust the overall harp volume, Right now, the way that we've got things set up, I'm going to have to adjust both of these faders individually. Um, same with uh, our acoustic bass here. We've got a bass bridge mic and then also a bass room mic. Um, and those are set to good relative levels you know, to each other. But if we want to sort of adjust the overall volume, that can be sort of a pain in the butt. So here's your process for creating a submix. Go up to Create and Create a Mix Channel. Okay, so now that will place a stereo mix channel, a new stereo mix channel at the end of your mixer here, the right end of your mixer. All the other channels we have here are mono because they were created in the sequencer window here. So let's go back to our mix window here. So now we've got a stereo channel going on. Now we want to look at what that channel looks like in the hardware rack. So we'll go to the device as loaded into the hardware rack. Actually, let's just look at the rack. Now let's collapse uh, all these other things because if you've got everything open, when you look at the back of the rack, things can start to get a little, little confusing, a little cluttered visually. Let's rename this channel Harp Bus. And on this channel, with the channel selected, we want to create a simple line mixer. Now we're not going to use all the inputs on this line mixer. We're only just going to use the first two. Now let's hit tab to look at the back of our rack, the connections. And let's expand the two harp channels. Now you can see over here we have direct outs on these channels and there's the little uh, sort of curio, curio, a little proviso, a little written indicator that says you will break the internal mixer routing by using the direct outs here. Uh, and that's what we want to do because we want to mix, we want to route this, these two channels to our line mixer that's on our harp bus. So we left click on the direct out of harp L, go over to line mixer, channel one left, and that'll automatically attach both to the first channel in our line mixer. We're gonna do the same thing with the second channel in our line mixer. So now we are routing our two harp channels back to this harp bus channel. So let's go back to, uh, so let's go back to our mixer because there's one thing that we have to do before we start playing back. We want to take both of our harp 
channels and pan them to the center because we're going to be doing our panning, our stereo panning at the bus. At, at, actually, at the line mixer that's feed, uh, feeding the bus. So let's go back to our rack here. Look at the front of the rack. We want channel 1 to pan left, channel 2 to pan right. Go back to our mix view and play back. Come a little bit closer. Hear what I have to say. Now you can see that we can control the level of the harp with a single slider. And we can create a sequence track for this slider and automate effects. And it's now just a much more efficient way of dealing with that instrument as a whole in the broader context of the mix. Just like children sleeping, we could dream this night away. Now let's go back to our rack view and look at the back here. You'll notice that when we created this harp bus, the channel was created with inputs, left and right inputs. So we could actually just feed our harp mix right into the harp bus. Uh, and that's a pretty efficient way of just taking a stereo instrument uh, and creating a bus for it. But the reason that I showed you how to create the line mixer, and you can also use the 14-2 sort of more full-fledged channel mixer that you'll be familiar with if you used Reason, is that if you want to create a submix that's being fed more than two inputs, that's why you want to create a mixer in your harp bus channel or your, your bus channel, whatever it may be. Because then if you create, for example, the 14-2 mixer, this guy, now you can take 14 stereo channels uh, and feed them all into one bus. And so you can take you know very complex mix elements uh, be very precise with the relative levels and relative pans and even when you know if you create a 14-2 mixer with the relative EQs of all, all those things and tie them to one channel back on your mixer, back in your mixer interface. So that's how you create a submix bus in Propellerhead Record. It's not necessarily the most intuitive action, uh, but once you do have it uh, properly created, you can see that you've got a lot of options and it does kind of make uh, more complex mixing um, a little bit more straightforward once, once you've set it up correctly. Thanks for watching GearWire.com. I'm Owen O'Malley. See you later.